Got a little stack today. Not too much. But uh, I figured I'd whip out a quick review session of comics before I jump in the shower. I got wild hair going on, I know. I had to let the hair down. <laughs> but yeah, I figure what the heck. Get a quick review in. So I got it done and over with. Starting out with this Brute Force thing that came with the ash can and then these weird card set up for some comic teasers of the character and stuff. Don't know, still don't know much about this character after reading it. It basically takes place in hell. And yeah, this green guy with the fire hair and the green girl with the fire hair. And they're kind of like going back and forth. I think she's not actually herself. I think it's someone else portraying her in here. And that's why he treats her the way he does in the beginning. And, but he's still trying to help her. And... They are kind of like a, a power couple, it sounds like, or something like that in the Hell Realm. But we got some other characters that are after him that he battles away with. And we see these... Uh, we never really get like a backstory out of this Ash Can or whatever, but... Eventually, it kind of silver surfers off. <laughs> Our characters end up turning silver, and the female character comes and helps him after something in the battle happens. And it's it has a kind of Adam, Adam and Eve of Hell feeling to it in the start. With the ash can. But then uh, we go into this thing, which was very interesting. Because it looks like a comic. We open it up. And it's basically the cover. For the comic. And then eight cards. Which have the story, story page on one side. And the other side has a character. Showing with a little thing on top. Describing some stuff, but uh, about the character, giving you some information about it. And as far as these characters go, that they show on the back, there's only a couple that are really in the story that we get so far. But this story takes us a little, little deeper into what's going on, but it still basically stays in the hell, hell realm. I suppose I should throw all the character backs on these but i still don't really get the gist of what the story is about like the characters the good and bad or I, I, like i don't even know which ones are good and bad i don't know if our green character aurora i think his name is or something like that is the good guy of hell or of all these characters are obviously bad guys that are after him because they look funky, but yeah, there's some in very interesting characters on the back of these cards. Mega Men, it's like, it shows kind of an evolutionary changing of the character from a two-armed character to this four-armed character to a hulked-up character. But yeah, I I liked what I read. I'd like to see more. But I'm going to have to, I'm not going to show you the last page and ruin it for you. I'll show you the character on the page. But yeah, I'll have to figure out where I can get my hands on some more of these and see if I can get deeper into the story from it. But it is basically brute force. Uh, male brute, male, M-A-E-L, brute, and Aurora. Okay, Aurora is the female in the storyline. So, yeah. so we're going to see what this gives us for just, we got Bart Scar, Sears, Andy Smith, Ray Crissing, TJ T. 
Tobolsky, Wes Merritt, and Brad Perkins. And edited by Michael J. Morrissey, which I know that name. But uh, the male Laurel character, male, is a uh, brute. Yeah, Aro Sharath is Aurora. Oh, Auro, A U O R O. I guess there's not two R's in there, but she's called the babe. And yeah, Ormeelio Marg, <laughs> which is Dramarg. <laughs> then you got Vair, Moon, and Snake. They're all mentioned in the, the inside cover where it begins. But Mael, the brute, and Aurora, the babe, are the chosen to unite and merge is their destiny. And yet, after years of fruitless searching, Mael's prospects for finding Aurora or Aurora, <laughs> are exhausted. I think they should have went with the Aurora, it's easier to say. And he has returned to his home. We pick up our story with a distraught, pensive male laurel brooding in his chambers atop his palace in the white citadel. So yeah, it's like they're a power couple. They're going to merge eventually. I don't know. I'd kind of get a teaser of that with the whole Silver Surfer style thing going on. But yeah, I don't know. I, I will definitely, if I come across more, I will definitely check those out. Because I guess that one with the single card is called Brute and Babe. It begins Monument Set Number 1 from Ominous Press. Which I don't think I've ever got anything else from Ominous Press. I don't know where they went to, if they still print or not. We have Girls of Ninja High School. From Antarctic Press. Ninja High School is one of my favorite manga. Long running, ongoing series because Ben Dunn uh, is the mainstay of that run. And I love Warrior Nun and all that stuff. I've Battle Pope, anything that I see with Ben Dunn's hands on it, I like to check out. And I usually enjoy it, but this is fun because you get, I didn't care for half of the story. You get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different stories in here. Um, the first one is a Ben Dunn. One where they kind of do like Chiba characters of all our girls in Ninja High School, which is fun. That story was one of my favorites. And then, uh, the next story goes into a Nintendo style game parody. Well, actually, yeah, I thought, yeah, this second one gets into a Nintendo style parody. Uh, they get power ups and stuff like that. The nice part about it is you got all these different creators. That worked on this, and you got all the different st artwork styles and stuff like that. So you got Ben Dunn did the first one, Robert De, he De Jesus did the second one, Dave Wilson's worked on the, a psychotic yarn from the I ID again, defying a suitable working title. That story was very strange, very pervy manga-esque. <laughs> you get those with some of the manga stories all the time. So if you're not into those, you don't really want to get into manga because you never know when you're going to get those to pop up. Yeah, Now they're distant friends, but not too distant for me. That one was, eh. Yeah, of Books and Brooms. The first story was Small Body, Ben Dunn World, and then... The second, the Nintendo one, was what Nintendo did not want to do. <laughs> yeah, of books and brooms, a little witchcraft-style story, all this and Sushi 2 and The Ring. But yeah, that's, I don't want to show too much because there's some pervy things in here and stuff, but 
Yeah, you get a ton of different art styles. That's got that Sunday Comics feel in that storyline. And one gets into a kind of a gargoyle-ish uh, body morphing type story. You get robotic battle stories in here, but yeah, it gives you a good variety of different things throughout. It gives you a good variety of art styles, good variety of story styles. We get a little noir gangster style story in here. Lots, a few different parodies throughout. But yeah, I like these. I found them. These three I'm talking about today, I believe I all picked them, picked all three up at a half price book. So that was. They were a really good deal. They were like a buck a piece or something like that. You'd have to go back and look at my old videos, my unpackings to find out for sure. But pretty sure these came from one of the half price books, shopping excursions. And we got Ninja High School, Perfect Memory. This is awesome for anybody that wants to know tons of stuff about Ninja High School. Because you got the nin Ninja High School issue synopsis. You got character and mecha design. You got a Ben Dunn interview. You got production articles and fan art and all new Ninja High School story. And then Professor Steamhead trivia contest throughout here. So yeah, it's it's awesome because like when they go back, they'll go they go all the way back to Ninja High School number one. And they gave you the synopsis of each one. Ninja High School three and a half. And like, give you a nice little synopsis for each each story i can't remember if they went like 20 issues oh they went up to the 1989 ninja high school yearbook with those so it takes you about 20 issues in and you get your some previews of the ninja high school world some maps that give you some information about where the characters Lineup, dining, and character sketch and drawing work throughout. This nice little story thrown in there that we haven't read before. Yeah, fan art and fan stuff. I mean, this is a pretty thick, nice thick book. Uh, lots of fun information in here. Uh, it's like, yeah. Well worth it, even if it was more than a buck. Definitely worth picking that up because I found out some stuff I didn't know before. Like I said, I it is Ninja High School is one of my favorite long running ongoing, but it is long running, <laughs> so I didn't start from the beginning or anything like that. I'm not trying to complete the collection. I just pick up issues that I see here and there, so there's no way I'll probably get that fully collected but i was really surprised to come across these three items because they're all kinds of like special uh ninja high school items and there's the third one which is a ninja high school swimsuit edition i've mentioned this be or swimsuit special from 1993 i've mentioned this before it drives me nuts when they do a swimsuit special and all it is is pictures of the characters in swimsuits this one gives you a variety of stories and uh my uh the xenoscope i don't think but the one that does van helsing and my robin hood characters and all that they throw a story in with theirs every time they do a swimsuit special so i pick those up because the stories are really enjoyable also but i like what they did with this comes with this hard cover you got the characters in there Regular clothes, you got the characters in their swimsuit, and that's the half cover in the front, and then the back cover also does it with a few of the characters. And you gotta watch it, it's got that split, so there's no cover on the other side of the upper half. So I'm like, oh shit, it's, it's ripped, but no, it's not. This is number two. <clears throat> so I'm guessing 1992 is when they did the first one, and they brought this one out, but yeah, it's all the stories are beach esque related. Try not to have anything too pervy. Because of course with a swimsuit issue, 
you're gonna get a little pervy, but yeah, you got a beach takeover going on. You got <laughs> characters having fun. You got characters trying to date and stuff. Fun advertisements throughout. Uh, yeah, it's just great art, great storylines, fun stories that all kind of interconnect everything. Yeah, I can't show that picture. I suppose I couldn't show anything on my YouTube, but I don't know. Now, this last thing I did not finish. I read half the first book. Yeah, but this is going up for sale on eBay. Scourge of the Gods, three-issue run. I don't care for biblical Caesar Roman type storylines, and that's what this is. And great artwork and stuff. Great story if you're into that, I'm sure. I and mean, the little bits and pieces I did read were interesting, but not interesting to me. <laughs> I don't care for that. I'm not into the Greek mythology anymore. I'm not into the Roman Catholic, all that basically inter inbreeding, <laughs> treating everybody like crap, uh, power hungry, power wealthy characters that control everything and run the whole country themselves and everybody else that's below them are just crap that they can do whatever they want with, torture how they want, and all that stuff. I'm just not into that. I just don't care for that anymore. I don't know if I ever did care for it, but <clears throat> I'm not going to read it. This is from Marvel Comics. I scanned through the pages just to see if there was something that would pull me in, but it didn't. Didn't look like it really goes beyond this. It's basically a power hungry godlike characters that want to just control everything. I'd give you the synopsis, but they got a big long thing in the beginning. I'm not going to read all that because it was hard enough just to read the few pages I did read. But if you're into that style thing, that's what that story is about. And it's just a three issue run Scourge of the Gods, uh, Moraturi de Te Sala. Salatant, <laughs> the name of the first issues. Book two is Dies Ire, and book three is Irby et Orby. And the not even giving me words I can understand. <laughs> Valerie Mangan and Alexa Gaji are the ones that did it. But that, that's going on the eBay circuit this week. So if you're interested. Punch those words in, and you'll find that listing. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today. Nice little stack, fun little stack, and some something that I didn't didn't care about, but this pile I did. So check those out if they interest you. I will get back with more fun sometime soon. More reviews, more unpackings, some previews, whatever we decide to come up with. But yeah, that's a quick one for today, but got to get something out there. The one I'm reading right now is a seven, seven comic run, so I'll take a couple days. But it's a good one. Good one from the past that I read, and I don't remember the storyline going this way, so I'm curious if I'll remember anything on the, in the later comic. I won't tell you what it is till I review it, so. All right, keep following, rate, review, subscribe, tell a friend, help us out, get those likes. Keep checking out Under the Color of MS, check out all the different platforms, check out Crimson Color Comic Club, and I will get back to you sometime soon. Bye.